Good morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. My name is Carrie Wade and I am a certified hypnotherapist and Reiki master teacher and a life coach. And today I'm going to talk about something that's kind of heavy that really I wish it wasn't something that we even needed to talk about or think about and that is suicide. Um, gosh, we just, we hear about it every day. It's happening in our schools, it's happening in our families, it's happening in our, our circles of friendships and our community. And it's, it's so heavy, it's so dark. Good morning, Amanda. Um, unfortunately talking about the wonderful subject of suicide. Uh, yesterday, of course, Kate Spade took her own life. Um, we, we hear it all the time. And the thing that I just find so sad, especially, are the young people. Um, it's the second leading cause of death in kids between 14 and 25, I believe it is. Or 15 and 24, sorry. Mixed up my numbers there. 19.3% um, of kids in that age range have thought about it, have considered it. And I just, that just like almost takes my breath away. I find that so sad and so heavy. Um, depression, anxiety, stress, isolation, these are all big problems really in our society, especially in these teens and young adults. And there is a shame factor associated with depression, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the feeling of not belonging, exactly. Um, there's a shame factor connected with it, just like there is with alcoholism or drug addiction. And, you know, I lost my best friend, um, what's it been now, 13 years ago, uh, to alcoholism. And if there's one thing that came out of that for me, uh, well, a lot of things came out of that for me, but one thing that was really heavy is that we have to remove the shame. Um, we've got, there's a lot of depression. There, I know so many people who deal with depression. And I just wanna say if you're one of them, if you think your child might be one of them, if you think a friend or a loved one or a family member or a work partner might be one of them, please, please encourage them to get some help, get therapy. Um, I would love to integrate with that work as well with the Reiki and the hypnotherapy if there's any need. And make sure you memorize and have your kids put in their phones the number for the National Suicide Hotline. It's a very easy number, 1-800, uh, I have to look it up, 273-TALK, <laughs> 1-800-273-TALK, or 8255, I believe it is. Put that number in your phone. Make sure it's in your kids' phones. Have the talk. Um, you know, you, the parents, I watched a, a special last night, or not a special, it was like a documentary on Amazon about teen suicide, and it was called If You Only Knew. And um, parents should all watch this because I think they had some really great points in there. And, um, you know, your kids might not willingly give it up if they're going through something. Um, we all think that our children will talk to us no matter what. Good morning, Grant. And um, they, sometimes you have to really push and prod and really try to get them to open up just make sure that they have that number. If you think that there's anything that could be going on, try to get them help. Try to get them some integrative help as well. And, um, you know, again, that number for the National Suicide Hotline, 1-800-273-TALK. Uh, get it in your phones. One of the things, and um, one of the things that they talked about in the show is you know, as parents, we 
we are so involved in the, with our children's lives. I think now more than ever, really, um, you know, parents are keeping a very close eye on their kids because they know, you know, what's going on out there. And sometimes we may tend to, to try to fix things for them instead of letting them work out their problems or helping them work out their problems, letting them feel the pain. You know, it's okay to feel pain. We have to feel pain. It's part of our growth process. It's just part of life. And, you know, parents are too quick to jump in and say, well, I'm going to call Susie's mom and get this taken care of, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, you have to let your children learn how to cope with these things. We have to teach them better coping skills and, and um, <sighs> give them some, some privacy to work out their problems with your full support, of course. I was really surprised to hear that 47% of teens reported being cyberbullied. And bullying and social media are all contributing factors um, to what we're seeing going on with, especially with the teen suicide. But, um, you know, we just, I just think we can do better than this. They have to learn coping skills. I would love to see meditation taught in schools. Um, I would love to see some of these, these integrative therapies, learning to tap, um, which is the, you know, the tapping solution, emotional freedom technique. Um, wonderful tool for this. Guided imagery is wonderful. Um, you know, why aren't we teaching these things to our children? When I took my Reiki master teacher training class, we had a, a young man in our class, and absolutely amazing. I think there were about 10 or 12 of us in the class. And Lisa, if you're watching this, maybe you can pipe in and say, um, you know, or make a comment later, how old the little boy was. But we had a little boy in our class, I think he was eight years old. And he had been working with, Mace, with Lisa and got his first Reiki training when he was only four years old. Now that's really young. But, oh my gosh, what if we were teaching 10-year-old children how to do Reiki, at least the first level of it, so that they could help heal themselves and help their friends and stuff as well. Um, cutting and bulimia, you know, those are other, other things that we see a lot of. And that's just releasing energy. Um, these trapped emotions that kids have because they are so afraid, and adults too. Um, they're so afraid to be vulnerable because they're afraid of being judged. So what about, what about we just practice more kindness? Invite our loved ones and our friends to be vulnerable. I invite you all to be vulnerable. And be willing to put yourself out there. And do what you can to make a difference. It just, Oh, it just, it, it's a, you know, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem, you know, um, but you create a, a permanent problem for those that are left behind. And there are just so many other ways around it. And anything I can do to help you in that process, um, if you're ever feeling, feeling down or if you have a friend who you think could benefit from some of the things that I do, then I would really, really love to talk to you. Uh, get help first, get professional help, seek therapy, call that 1-800, um, God, why do I keep forgetting it after I said it's easy? 273-TALK, 273-TALK. Um, it's the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Make sure it's programmed, good morning, Mark. Make sure it's uh, programmed in your phone and the phone of your loved ones. Seriously. <laughs> I love you too. Thanks for the hearts. It's pretty fun to see those hearts come up. So I know kind of a, kind of a deep subject here and um, let's just try to do better. Let's try to do better. Let's try to encourage one another more. Um, let's try to take the stigma and the shame away from depression, mental illness, 
um, addictions, all of those things that, you know, we, it happens. It happens to people. So <sighs> that's my heart heavy message for today. Um, I usually, I try to keep these upbeat, I know, but sometimes we have to be real, you know, we have to be realistic and we have to talk about these things. And, um, you know, if you know somebody who you think might be feeling kind of down or maybe going through some depression, um, reach out to them. A little quick note in the, in the mail and, uh, or a phone call or invite them out for a cup of coffee. Um, it doesn't take much to brighten somebody's day, and I don't think we do it enough. We know those people that make us feel good just by reaching out and saying, Hey, I love you, I care, I see you. As my beautiful friend Casey Miller says, um, there are no extras in this world. Everybody is here for a reason. We all have a purpose and we all matter. And just let those people know that you do see them and you love them and you care and help them to get help if they're willing. And just holding the space sometimes for somebody else is the kindest thing you can do for them. And it's what I love most about what I do. I love holding that sacred space and every time I work with a client. I have this deep gratitude within me for the privilege and the honor of being able to do that. It's very meaningful. The world needs more light workers, so shine your light, my little light workers. It is a tough subject, and uh, I know people don't like to talk about it. But we have to, we have to have that conversation. Let's move on to a postcard from Spirit now after that deep, dark, sad subject. But, you know, it just takes, it just takes, like I said, just takes reaching out, touching someone, being kind, share a smile. These are the postcards from Spirit from Colette Baron Reed. And um, this is, I just ask for a message every day that will resonate with everybody watching either now or later and if you're in a place that you are able to do so and you're willing to do so I would just invite you to take a nice deep breath and let your eyes close inhaling in deeply and exhaling all the way as you breathe in just breathe in that love and that light. Fill your heart, fill your abdomen, fill your lungs. And exhale and just release any stress. Let go of what no longer serves you. Sometimes it feels so good to just simply breathe. Dearest you, as you think, so will you experience life. Thoughts are that powerful and they need minding. Let the unruly, chaotic ones settle down so they serve you or get released instead of wreaking havoc. These thoughts arise when connected to the energy of fear and often masquerade as truth. Yet the real truth is that essentially all is well. Of course, you have thoughts that are positive and strong, organized, accepting, creative, open, and so on. Those are the ones that we want you to keep thinking and they have a less frantic quality. They are stimulating in a good way and don't get away from you. How do you keep an inner eye on your thoughts? Meditate and leave judgment out of the mix. Everyone has these fearful thoughts. Love them, love yourself. 
and then choose the thoughts you want the world to reflect back. Life is not as hard as you think. Loving you so much. Life is not as hard as you think. Yeah. What a great message to take into your heart today. Life is not as hard as you think. So go out there, love somebody, spread the word. Wow again, right Grant? I know, every day. Yes, you're right Amanda, these things do need to be talked about. You know, it's, it's, and it's our job, if we're aware of it, it's our job to talk about these things. And it's our job to reach out and be kind. And Grant, it is amazing. Thank you for being here. I think you are all amazing and you all matter. I see you. I honor you. I cherish you. And I thank you for being here. Reach out if there are any questions I can answer for, answer for you. If there's anything you need help with, and just know that you are loved. And Amanda, Postcard from Spirit, always has the perfect words after our discussion, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. I love it. I'm so honored that you are here. Peace and blessings. I love you.